everyone. Good Friday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm with weather for weather geeks getting set for the weekend and some heat building into the valley. The heat really started to build in today, even though it's just kind of a standard July day, a little bit above the average by three degrees. We made it to 86 at the airport this afternoon with manageable dew points and humidity levels. You know, I, I joked at uh, six o'clock on our newscast, if you could walk into the store and just pluck out a summer day off the shelf. Today was kind of an off the shelf summer day. Pretty standard issue stuff for our part of the country at this time of the year. Good looking morning with temperatures in the 50s and sunshine early on. And then we rose quickly through the 60s, 70s and 80s. We had a field of cumulus clouds that bubbled up as expected. And these will fade away pretty quickly this evening, leaving us with a clear sky overnight. Now, there has been a couple of showers, as expected, uh, occasionally a bolt of lightning out across uh, central Ohio, northwest Ohio as well. Uh, these will be in the process of fading away as we head towards sunset this evening. This is actually a little weather disturbance out here that uh, is too far to the west to bring us any precipitation this evening. Um, and out to our east, we have a kind of a stronger weather system, a stalled front almost, with an area of low pressure off the uh, eastern seaboard that is producing some wet weather. My radar doesn't want to load up here, it looks like, but uh, yeah, if the radar would show up, we'd see a whole bunch of rain for Virginia Beach and Myrtle and a lot of places where there's a lot of people gathered here in the middle of the summer. They're not thrilled with the forecast, even though a lot of those areas do need some rain. All right, Barrel, of course, brought lots of tornadic activity. We talked about this last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks, and stepping back and taking a look at the yearly totals, uh, we talked about th about this some uh, last evening as well, and here's a look at state-by-state -state break uh, state -state breakdown, I should say. Uh, the most active states in terms of tornadoes so far in 2024, Texas leads the pack, no surprise, because they get a lot of tornadoes in Texas, and Texas is also a very big state. Look at Nebraska, though, at 128, and Iowa, not a very big state, at 120. Ohio is tied with Oklahoma, 73 tornadoes, preliminarily speaking. Uh, so far in 2024, the state of Pennsylvania, up to 27, but interesting uh, and not always what we'd expect, that Ohio is tied with Oklahoma. No tornadoes here locally anytime real soon, but as we kick off the uh, weekend, the heat will build in. Now, the dew points are going to stay pretty manageable on Saturday. If you're heading to the Trumbull County Fair or doing anything else outdoors, a slap on the sunscreen, be ready for some July heat, a little bit even hotter than today. And we have inserted a small risk of a shower or a thunderstorm into our Saturday afternoon forecast. A lake breeze is going to set up downwind of Lake Erie, maybe just enough to trigger isolated, random shower and thunderstorm activity that only a small fraction of the area is probably going to see um, Saturday afternoon. So if you're heading out to one of our area lakes, I would say the best chance of a passing shower, perhaps a thunderstorm, would be in areas maybe around and north of 224. The farther south you are away from Lake Erie, I think the chances are very, very minuscule at a place like Guilford Lake. But certainly uh, Berlin, <clears throat> Meander Reservoir, heading up towards Mosquito Lake, uh, and a lot of our Mercer County waterways as well. The chance is there. Chance is a little bit higher on Sunday, especially late in the afternoon Sunday. Chance of thunder and lightning and some showers increase. Now let's show you what our model depiction here is here for the uh, weekend. We'll be quiet and calm Saturday morning. Didn't draw any sort of front on the map, but if you look carefully at the wind barbs here, there's a little bit of a northerly component that develops off of Lake Erie. A little mini cold front um, that could be just enough to to tap into the heat and moderate humidity to trigger a shower and storm. They fade away quickly as we head towards evening. And then during the day Sunday, warm front heads our way. Now this is the front that's going to unlock the really tropical air mass by Sunday night into Monday and Tuesday. But it will be enough probably to bring some showers and storms to parts of the Buckeye State as early as the first half of the day Sunday and into eastern Ohio and western PA before the afternoon is through. Now the forecast beyond that is tricky. Um, beyond Sunday afternoon. As we get into Sunday night and Monday morning, we're into a situation where there's going to be some subtle little disturbances in the atmosphere that will probably try to spark off additional rounds of showers and storms. These are going to be hard to predict if they happen at all. They're going to be hard to predict as far as a path goes, people impacted more than 12 or 18 hours in advance. But I think the most likely scenario is that there's some sort of cluster of showers and storms that tries to dive through maybe Sunday night and Monday morning. Monday afternoon may be okay. It's, we wait this activity out here, and that may make it to its way towards our area, maybe more so Monday night into Tuesday. So again, Sunday night 
and then Monday night into Tuesday maybe are are more active periods. And I think it'll stay pretty active, in fact, into Wednesday morning ahead of the next front. Now, when we break down these severe weather chances, I don't think severe weather is very likely with any afternoon activity Sunday. But the chance is a little higher on Monday, maybe again particularly in the morning. I think overall our highest chance of severe weather now is with any clusters that roll through on Tuesday. This is going to be an air mass by Monday and Tuesday characterized by temperatures in the low 90s. Uh, the dew points 70 to 74, a pretty steamy air mass, and it's not going to be asking much for the atmosphere to produce some fireworks at times into Tuesday night and perhaps Wednesday morning. Now, it's going to be hot, as you know, over the next handful of days, but I'll tell you, the medium and longer range, not looking that hot across our area. This is today's long range outlooks from the Climate Prediction Center. This is the cool down that comes at the end of next week. A couple of beautiful days, probably next Thursday, next Friday. Highs in the upper 70s, lots of sunshine. Beyond that, the heat remains centered out west as we roll into the final stages of July and probably even, even into early August. Now, c could there be some hot days occasionally? Yes, but this is not a pattern that's likely to sustain a lot of heat for multiple days in a row, kind of like we're about to see over the next few days. You know, those kinds of stretches may be not all that common at all late this month and into early in August. I kind of suspect the rest of August will get pretty hot. But we'll talk more about August in the longer range on future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching on this Friday evening. Have a great weekend, everyone. I am off on Monday, so I'll see you back here on Tuesday.